guys, Ozzy Griffin here. I recently watched the uh, Captain America The Winter Soldier and I loved it. Absolute 10 out of 10 movie. The best bit of all was that they mentioned Stephen Strange. Doctor Strange. my One of my favourite characters in the whole Marvel Universe. Uh, he was a perfect, picture perfect, literally picture perfect, example of 1960s psychedelia. Now, I wanted to suggest to Marvel, if they ever put him in a movie... I wanted to suggest the origin story of Doctor Strange as I do it. Okay, so dig this with me. <sighs> you start with the original backstory from the animated movie. He was a surgeon who lost his own sister in a surgical procedure that he devised himself, uh, and though he had absolute confidence in it, um, it still didn't work out. He's become an unlikable individual, and he has um, he has basically been... Uh, keeping himself aloof from other people so he doesn't hurt anyone else. So what happens with Stephen Strange? He becomes suicidal after an accident, uh, cripples his hands, and an order of monks and mystics that has been watching him and observing many people around the world uh, using conventional technology figures that if he's lost, they lose a whole bunch of surgical procedures that they figure he's going to invent and that will actually hold back humanity's progress in terms of medicine. They're looking at all different fields. You, there's a great montage perspective in this. Um, with, with the idea that if Stephen Strange is taken out of the picture, it's going to take a lot of other people out of the picture and stop inspiring other people. There's a run-on effect, and they do not want to risk that. So they organize uh, for his ex-girlfriend to walk by at just the right moment where he's about to throw himself off the bridge, and stop him from doing so. Once again, not using magic, big thing in this movie. Then they whisk him off to Tibet uh, to get his hands fixed. Now, basically, when they get to Tibet, he, the complex he comes across is... It's like the Avengers Mansion on steroids. More like, only it doesn't even bother with the aesthetics. It's a prison. It looks like a fortress or a prison. It is basically built out of blast-proof concrete and all the defences are pointed inwards. Upon getting his hands healed, the mystic who does so dies on the spot, and suddenly Stephen realises that one, it works, and two, there's an incredible price that's to be paid, because the minute the mystic dies screaming, babbling incoherently, and starting to melt, uh, you realise that the entire th fortress is t designed to do two things. One, drain power off Dormammu, which they've done, and to uh, prevent his escape, which would be localized inside it. What you find out is that last mystic was all the power that they needed, and only Stephen's phenomenal gift with healing is the only reason why they bothered to take the risk. What you slowly have happen as the whole system goes into lockdown is that uh, Dormammu's influence is Lovecraftian. He is slowly driving people mad. Because the previous Sorcerer Supreme uh, decided it would be a good idea to set up a one-way barrier on Dormammu. All of their... any magic that has a positive, constructive, healing, nourishing effect on people can be taken out of it. That's fine. However, any impulses that they send to Dormammu with selfishness, pride, greed, lust, envy, uh, wrath... Anything to hurt or destroy people or basically make life worse for everybody are not allowed out. The problem is Dormammu hasn't had anything else to eat for about, oh, five, maybe six hundred years. And though you've got a very pious, very uh, nice group of monks out there, it's all an illusion. It's all because they can't access any of their darker side. Hence their reluctance to use magic. Now, finally, Dormammu has corrupted one of them. We'll say Wong for the point of being interesting. Um, to the point where he can get out... He can finally influence someone to use as a puppet. What happens as he goes through the complex and tries to save people yet fails because these people are consumed by their own worst natures is Stephen finds that... He finally talks down... Finds Wong and finally talks him into the ending of the movie, which is where he has to choose between... Killing Dormammu off, killing all the 
sorcerers off and trying to use his innate magical senses to find other sorcerers and kill them off so that it'll never become a problem again. Or letting Dormammu out and letting him finally balance himself. And what you find out is Dormammu's become suicidal as well as crazy, uh, stuck in that other dimension. He hates being just negative. However, the reason he's killing and absorbing all the sorcerers is because he's also absorbing their good nature as well to balance himself back out. Kind of a spiritual equivalent of a macrobiological diet. So basically, and yeah, I should know a bit about that. So basically, what happens at the end of the movie, as I would put it, Wong is saved, even though being exposed to Dormammu, listening, just listening to Dormammu, just to try and understand him better, has driven him insane. Poor Shattered Wong and the deeply um, traumatized Stephen Strange are left with uh, all of the good and bad stuff which had festered and uh, grown, I guess what you'd call polarized, scattering around the world. Now this has a great opportunity for a great montage sequence where you'd see the good and the bad characters in the Marvel Universe becoming both better and worse now they've got their, an extra layer of problem or an extra layer of thoughtfulness about their own issues to deal with. Uh, you could probably even link this into um, uh, Iron Man, aka uh, Tony Stark and his drinking. Now, what you've got throughout the whole thing is a motif of dealing with yourself and balancing yourself. I'd like to see the ending having Stephen Strange doing the Eckhart Tolle thing and basically talking to people about balancing themselves before they can gr get greater power and greater utility out of life, which is, a hint, which is his veiled way of saying, I have magic and I'm not going to give it to you. One idea I had was that Stephen, who is already seen as the guy who can consume magic using the Sorcerer Supreme Amulet, is tracking down pockets of magic that were left or were jarred up and absorbing them around the planet so that only he could grant this supreme power of sorcery to people who he thinks were genuinely balanced and worthy. However, the fact that uh, the sanctums, like religious centers, ah, get called cults a lot of the time because all the defenses are turned inward like a prison. People think it's to keep the followers in. It's not. People think that it's a cult. It might be. However, in this case, it is the home base of people who hold a very great power and guard against its misuse. However, they have to guard against themselves. So, that's just a couple of ideas I'm throwing out there. There's a couple of endings you could do. Probably make for a bitching game. Um, however, I'm just hoping that someone at Marvel or uh, Disney will pick this up and uh, just use it as an inspiration. Depending on how you want to do it or how briefly you want to see magic in action, I think the briefer the better because looking at people who use technology to try and get around this force which really represents part of themselves would actually be a great way to do it and you wouldn't have to do it with that big a budget. Anyway, I hope you, this has inspired you guys. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me ramble. And uh, yeah, I'm Ozzy Griffin. You have a good afternoon.